All aboard! Hello, everyone. We're going off the rails once again, where we take one Disney topic and we spend way too much time talking about it. I'm Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my friends, Denny Sunderly. Hi there. Jackie Gailey. Hi, everyone. And Rhino. Hello. Hello. I lost and steam on my, my last yell. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's fine. Before we get started, this episode is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you want to support our content because you like us and you like the content, you can do so by booking your next vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. So they will just be there to work as much or as little as you want, try to save you the most money or help you plan the most extravagant vacation you've ever had. It's a free service. It will cost you no extra money. To get a free no obligation quote, head to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today. And then please also make sure that you're hitting that thumbs up for us. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and leave any comments, questions, video suggestions in the comments section below. And if you're listening to this, make sure you're subscribed wherever you can be and leave us ratings and reviews if you're listening through Apple Podcasts. And you can always reach out to us through social media or email. But let's get started with the show. Now, our topic for today, what are we going off the rails on? Well, this is a, a an episode inspired by one of the amazing articles on our site uh, done by Zoe Wood. Avoid these five mistakes when booking your Disney summer vacation. And we're going to, to mess around with this topic a little bit. We're going to use the article as a jumping off point, but we're just going to talk about overall what mistakes you need to avoid when booking your Disney vacation. These vacations do cost a lot of money. And you know what? For some people, they're once in a lifetime. You want to make sure that you want to make sure that you nail it on the first try. And it's so easy. It's so easy to miss things that you'll you'll end up regretting later. So hopefully we can we can head off some of those problems. And uh, do you want me to read all of the uh, the little points as we go along here? Just do I have a volunteer to do so so I don't have to talk as much? I mean, I, I have it right here. I guess I don't yeah, care. Somebody can. Okay. Yeah. Well, Rhino, I'm going to let you take it away. Talk talk about our first point of mistakes to avoid. Our uh, first mistake to avoid, according to Zoe Wood, is underestimating table service lunches. Do you want me to read you what she wrote here? Sure. Uh, she says, admittedly, admitted, well, I'm already off to a terrible start. <laughs> admittedly, I am more of a spontaneous eater when visiting the Disney parks, but in pandemic conditions and hot weather, it can be easy to overheat when out and about. Be sure to add in a few table service meals for lunch in the hottest part of the day so you can enjoy the air conditioned comfort and recoup some of your energy. Even though masks are required when you aren't actively eating or drinking, you don't want to underestimate the restorative power of shade, cool air and someone bringing you a cold drink. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to be the one person who has to dissent on this one. I, I am not a huge table service person any time of a vacation. I am, I am far from it. I, I don't like table service unless I know it's at the very end of the night and I'm not going to be doing anything else. Uh, I just, in the middle of the day like that, it's a big commitment to make is to say, I'm going to chalk off this time right here where I know I'm just going to sit down and eat. And for people who visit Walt Disney World as as a solely a place to dine and try all these different menu items that you've been you've been wanting to get, I, I understand it from that perspective. But I am I am a ride forward person and you grab snacks and small meals in between. So I don't necessarily agree with adding a table service lunch in there. I think I think even on top of that, sometimes people add too much table service. And again, if your whole if it's a food trip, I get it. But uh, don't don't think that don't think that it's necessary to even go to Walt Disney World and do any table service at all. You can still eat good with quick service and you'll make sure you have plenty of time to do all of those those attractions you want to do. So that's just my take, though. Mm -hmm. yeah, was, I, yeah, um, I'm I'm more of like a table service in the evening kind of person. And, and I think 
I mean, as far as uh, judging uh, the trips I've had, whether it be here at Walt Disney World or going out to Disneyland, I like to have a bit of a balance. Like I roll in with a list of things I want to eat. And, but I also roll in with a list of attractions that I want to ride. So I, um, I agree with you, Craig, that taking uh, time to do a table service restaurant in the middle of the day can be difficult and is not what I normally want to do. If I'm visiting from far away, I want to get all my things done, my must do's. Um, but I do also want to have a nice uh, meal at some point and usually in the evening. But I think just basing it off of what Zoe said, as far as air conditioning, middle of the day, I think that's brilliant. I And I agree wholeheartedly. So maybe it's an attraction or two like Mickey's Philhar Magic, where you can get inside for a bit. Um, maybe the Mickey Shorts Theater at Hollywood Studios where you can watch that. So you're getting two birds with one stone, just, just kind of interspersing some air conditioning for a chunk of time <coughs> midday is a good thing. Huh. That's what we like to see. I'm with Zoe. We like to, we used to like to have like a couple of our days where we'd have like a super early dinner, like in the heat of the day, like three thirty, quarter to four, you know, where you just kind of, get out of the, out of the heat. And the other thing we really liked about that is um, having our bigger meal so early in the evening, in the, you know, late afternoon, early evening, so that we could still have our whole nighttime to be out and about because when the sun goes down, that's when our favorite time of the day was to be out in the parks. So um just love that. And then, you know, and then that would kind of free up part of our stomach room to get a fun treat in the evening and watch fireworks, which is not a thing right this minute, but it is fun to have a few hours go by between eating dinner and then being able to like get a special treat or something like that. Um, so, but I also had written down planning too many <laughs> dining reservations as a thing you really need to avoid too so <laughs> there you go i and yeah. we'll, we'll get to that in just a second i think you brought yeah. up a great point about what time is a good time to plan your dinner and i know rhino's probably got some thoughts too so i'll let him jump in but if you follow i don't know if this is other places around the united states anymore because i've now lived in florida too long that i forget what weather is like other parts of the world and it's shocking and I'm embarrassed for it. But in Florida, unless there's that that thunderstorm around two, three o'clock to really cut into the heat and humidity, the hottest point of the day in Florida is usually in summertime and like right now is anywhere between four and six o'clock. And it's mm -hmm. it's much hotter than at noon. So if you're going to plan time to get out of the heat where you want to you really want to get out at the worst time. I think doing that early dinner is actually the smarter approach to it because five o'clock, that's when that's when Florida is literally on fire and trying just, to yeah. to just uh, torch us all. It is it is mm -hmm. so hot. But uh, Rhino, any any yeah. thoughts? Yeah, I was I was going to say I'm kind of a, a mix of all of you. Like I, I'm with you in terms of I don't like um, quick service unless it's like that's all I'm doing. Like if it's like, OK, Tuesday, I'm going to go to this dinner and then that's it. That's this. That's all I want to plan around is that dinner on Tuesday, because um, I feel like I'm at the mercy of the speed of the restaurant and the servers and like all of that sort of stuff. So I can I can't just get up and go. I have to like wait for a check. I have to send the card back. I have to sign the check, you know, that sort of a thing like it. So I don't I don't like it in that aspect because um, but I do I would say don't underestimate taking that time out to just stop and slow down everything for a little bit, because that's that's why I. I, I will always have this conversation with anybody who will sit and listen to me about it at baseline tap house is that I know people think about it as being like, Oh, it's just another bar, but it's not really that for me. It's that it's like, it's the atmosphere that it creates um, with the tables and the umbrellas and, 
you know, the music in the shade and being able to just sit and have a cold drink for a little bit and like a snack, you know, having like the, the board or a uh, pretzel or something like that. And just really just taking a few minutes in the shade, sitting there and just like slowing down your role. But you can, you can just be like, Oh, well I'm getting up and I'm going now because you went and got your stuff yourself and you found that squared off area. Right. And, um, so, so for me, I wish there was more places like that on Disney property. I actually don't think there are a lot. Like I, comparatively, I was like, I don't. I think that one has it down right. But like we we were talking the other day about going to Epcot, and I was like, no, there's nowhere at Epcot to do that really. Like, I I was even thinking like the idea was they turn Spice Road Table into a lounge, but even then, you're still it's a server. And I was like, well, I don't really want a server. I want to be able to just get somebody and then have like a squared off area to kind of have that moment to recollect myself and step out of the heat. So I kind of hope more more places like that pop up in the theme parks, more like more of these like kind of hybrid situations. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, baseline is really special. Yeah, it, it, it is. is something that they need. They need a lot more of. Yeah. I mean, it's it's why TGI Fridays grew to the the level that it did, because it was just a fun place to go and hang out at the end of the day and, and have some drinks, have some apps. And, you know, it only makes sense to translate it to baseline tap house, but then it should go beyond everywhere else. Minus Magic Kingdom. But even then, Magic Kingdom, it would be fun if they could just make a speakeasy where yeah. like only. Well, I guess it's Club 33, actually. You have to have. Yeah, I was going to say a secret area where you go in to drink. <laughs> <laughs> could they have a, could a they snuggly a duckling. Square? That would be yeah. kind of fun. <gasps> I, I like I that. Mean, I, like hey. that. They, I have no idea what that is. The, from Tangled. <laughs> from, from Tangled. Yeah. There's even. Oh, a oh okay. Okay. In yeah. the corner that could just. I you know. know. We could have the mm. ones overhead that they've already got going on in the Tangled bathroom mm. area. I'd and... even be happy if you yes, could just please. have like some of the custodial staff just like hide little bottles of liquor around the bathroom that you like <laughs> open up a slot and like, <laughs> thank you. Treasure <laughs> hunting <you>. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, this is just what I needed right now. Thank you so much. But okay, um, Jackie, you brought up too many reservations. What do you, what do you consider to be too many dining reservations booked? I think that if people book any more than one table service restaurant a day, that it's too much. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes, I like a lot of people may not agree with me. I've had a lot of people that don't agree with me with that, but I I'm so happy that you guys do because I just feel like the amount of time that it takes to dine in a table service restaurant is it just takes up too much of your day if you do more than one. So I But just, I don't want to be I, full I, all day either. Like, well, what? Right. That's th- it's too much you food. Know? What is, like you're usually eating more eat substantially like at a sit down. So that's, that's the problem, you know, too, is that you then you're kind of carrying that with you. And that's, that's another part of why I like the lounge area better because it's like, okay, well now we can go get our snack. I can keep, I can keep eating all day and I will Snacking. eat all day. Yeah. yeah. And I like to keep going from place to place to place to place, you know, and, and checking off the list instead of just like committing all to one, to one area. But what if we're talking about breakfast and dinner as your two, once and you only no, snack I already think in that's too much. Yeah. I, I just think because then you're I, do too. I, I don't know. I don't eat like that in real life. That's the other part, though, too, is that if if you were like on a, su- a Sunday, let's go out and, and have dinner and then whatever. I'd feel pretty terrible about myself if I had. I'm sorry if anybody is doing this, but that's just me personally, is that I can't have multiple meals out, I guess. I don't know. It's just I have some sort of weird mental block about it. <laughs> But, you know, you're on vacation. You have no choice but to be eating out everywhere. So it's not it's, it isn't the same already. But I don't know. It okay. just seems yeah, like a lot to me. If, yeah. Well, and you're well, and just, that's yeah. go ahead, Jackie. <laughs> are you are you sure? OK, well, like yes. you were saying breakfast, like <laughs> I feel like breakfast. If you have a big breakfast, you're not really second gonna breakfast. Eat. Yeah, I mean, like, you're not going to be hungry for lunch, really. You you might be kind of snackish, you know, or you might want lunch. You might want a sandwich or something. But if you go to a, a breakfast that's all you care to enjoy, you're not going to, like, be ready for lunch. Like, I think that well, people that's... don't 
that's what I'm really saying, though. Hot. Skip lunch. Yeah. And just Skip lunch. can. Yep. So that's why. Is it acceptable to do a sit down breakfast and dinner, a table service breakfast and dinner and just skip lunch in between? I, I think, think that would be easier. I mean, I on think, your. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a thing that more people should think of if you want those two table service uh, meals a day. Think about breakfast and dinner rather than lunch and mm-hmm. dinner or breakfast mm-hmm. and, and lunch. Go for the, the big yeah. gap in between. Yeah. yeah, I think I agree. If you really have your heart set on doing two a day, I think that would definitely be the way to do it. For sure. I mean, it, Breakfast all the food, yeah. it, it sounds so good that you just want all the food all the time. But in, in uh, you know, in actuality, when you get here, you're just going to be, you're going to find yourself taking a lot of time to eat and just feeling maybe overstuffed. I mean, that I'm just thinking of like a Disney cruise. Like I want all the food on a Disney cruise, but by the end of my cruise, no matter what the length is, I have, I have just, you know, I end up going, Oh my gosh, like I can't eat all this food. Cause there's so many sit down opportunities. You just, you know, I, I agree with breakfast, skip lunch and yeah, if you want another table service, why not? Okay. Well, Rhino, why don't you take us on to the next discussion point of this? Not taking advantage of water parks. They've become something many of us have forgotten about over the years. Fixated on the four main parks in Walt Disney World, Typhoon Lagoon and Disney's Blizzard Beach are often overlooked when we plan our time on vacation. Over the warmer months, these two locations are a fantastic way to spend the day, providing a much needed break from the heat as well as your masks in certain areas. Blizzard Beach reopened earlier this month, and Typhoon Lagoon is expected to open in time for the summer months. Um, I don't know that I... I don't think I agree with this. I, I, I agree with this if it's like November, December, January, February. Like, I think those are amazing times to go to the water parks because they're not overly crowded because people forget that it's still a million degrees here. But I don't find the water parks to be very... I don't... I'm never cool there. I feel like I'm always just baking alive or boiling in the water. I don't know. I I have this weird association with it where being like, I just don't think I like being in the sun outside anymore at all, period. So (laughs) I'm I'm going to rethink some things. (laughs) This is why we do stuff as a panel, because I'm glad that while you were sitting there choosing to voice that side, Denny and I were both uh, making all these faces. Like, I don't think I could disagree with the points you're making anymore, but how can I say it the most politely that I do disagree with the points you made? Uh, all the months you mentioned for when you should go to a water park to me, it's not, no, it, it's too cold. It doesn't matter all the heating that's done in the world. Mm-hmm. It's, I, there is nothing worse than getting out of the pool and then having that, that cool chill in the air. Even like on a 70 degree day, it can still have that random breeze. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. That was a bad mistake. And <laughs> now that we've lived in Florida so long, I've forgotten what it's like to actually have. Yeah, but if you're, and, if you're coming from the north or somewhere else, it, it, it'll still be hot weather to you. We would go yeah. swimming when it was 65 degrees outside of Massachusetts. So it's we one would. of those where I'm like, I remember coming here. When I first moved here and like it was amazing in the winter months to go to the water parks because there was nobody there. And so you could do everything that you wanted to do. And that water was always warm. I did make the mistake of going on a day where it ended up being pretty cold. (laughs) Yeah, I just like we did go swimming like that in in Pennsylvania, but it is then the adage too that your your body immediately starts clicking with the place you're visiting. And like my my dad was just in town and there was one night where it was getting into the fifties and telling him like you need to you need to get a jacket. You're you're going to be cold. Like I just got out of lows in the twenties. I'm not gonna be cold. And then <laughs> and every every time like clockwork, it's like actually, you know what? I am a little bit chilly. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm cold and it's only 50. It's just, yeah, get used to it. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm for yeah. water parks in the summer. I just, if I'm going to throw in a, a vote on this, I am always going to be team Typhoon Lagoon. Blizzard Beach, I don't get it. It's, it's got some fun yeah. slides. Slum, uh, I almost called it Slummit, but it's not. <laughs> Summit Plummet is is still one of the best water slides at Walt Disney World. It is so thrilling and scary, and it is amazing. And there there's a handful of ones I like at Blizzard Beach, but there is something about Typhoon Lagoon that it is just a, a tropical a lot- oasis. 
And I love it. it. I feel like there's a lot more diversity in what it offers. Yeah. It's got diversity and it's got a lot of shade. And Blizzard Beach has, you know, the foliage has grown there throughout the years. But when you're just standing there and you're like, why did they paint all of this white? It feels like it's also reflecting the same way black reflects in the sun. It just it feels like. It feels like I'm getting sunburn just walking around there where Typhoon Lagoon feels just more natural and and it flows with it. I just I, I, Typhoon Lagoon, just amazing. Blizzard mm-hmm. Beach. I mm. love it. Yeah, I'm with you, Craig. I think that Typhoon Lagoon is the bee's knees for real. <laughs> that their lazy yeah. river. Hot takes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what? Oh, it's up my nose. Am I not allowed to say that? <laughs> No, it, no, it I was just more didn't to... expect someone to say bees knees in 2021 in our active conversation. Sorry. I'm not judging you. I think it was really cute. I'm not it's just now I have it's just a little extreme. Water. We don't yeah. like to overwhelm <laughs> our audience with harsh harsh uh sayings like bees knees. Like it, it's it's just a little much. explicit rating. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, yes. Leave it to me. Yeah. Leave For it sure. to me. No, Typhoon Lagoon, absolutely, absolutely, we pick that one over Blizzard Beach in my book because of one thing and one thing alone. It is the cinnamon sugar coated mini donuts that are served at Typhoon Lagoon. And that is my, that is when I am there at Typhoon, that's my only must do is get those little donuts and I sit down and I shove them in my face and I'm just the happiest little camper. (laughs) But, but also in looking at the, you know, the amenities at Typhoon Lagoon, I, I pick it over Blizzard Beach for all the same reasons. And also for the fact that it uh, is as close to Castaway Key uh, as we're going to get here in, uh, on Disney property. I look down at the pavement and the pavement looks the same as Castaway. Um, The music is very similar, just the foliage. It's just all so lush and so beautiful. And um, so if you're not a water park person, one thing that I, that I wrote, on my list is okay if you don't want to incur the extra cost for working in a water park day at least um, take time to um, work in a day where you are at your resort whether it's a disney resort or an off-property resort it really doesn't matter but if you're going to try to attempt a walt disney a seven-day walt disney world trip Please, for the love of all things sane, add in a day at your resort, Mm -hmm. because if you don't, you will end up wanting to scream at every member of your traveling party because we get it. We want to do all the things. And, And so when you start working on your spreadsheet and planning out your Epcot day, you want to do all the things there and at Hollywood Studios and at Magic Kingdom and oh yeah, Animal Kingdom. And by the time that day five rolls around, you're just ready to scream. Please, Mm -hmm. please, please. If you choose not to go to a water park, um, consider adding in a resort day where there are no, um, you know, no things that are scheduled, nothing that you have to go do at a certain point. You can just play at the pool or Mm -hmm. hang out and read a book. Like if swimming isn't your thing, because at Typhoon, one of my favorite things, one of the last time I went to Typhoon, I brought a great book in magazines and ate donuts. And I sat there in my chair and did those two things and was the happiest camper. So just whatever it is, uh, put in a little bit of rest in the middle. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, even with that, perspective of it i think that i think that movies tv and books also they feel better when you watch them on vacation at walt disney Mm -hmm. world like i i despise it i'll say that about like all vacations but like i despise two broke girls but that is like rhino and my that is our guilty (laughs) pleasure when we're staying together because like especially in california on the channels because here 
in Florida, they would show it around like 4 a.m. So in California, it's one o'clock when it's on. And that's usually when we're winding down with the parks open up till like midnight. We're winding down and we put it on and there ends up being these like tired giggle fits where you don't really know why you're laughing, but you just (laughs) are. That is awesome. And like, I I, love it. It's just like. I know. And that's for after hours. But like, I remember it's going to be another weird Craig story on how did I get this way? But there was one time we were staying at Wilderness Lodge a day off out of the parks, which you do need. And I'm watching What's Eating Gilbert Grape in the hotel room. And I think that's one of the only reasons why it's like this heartwarming favorite movie for me, because I can picture being on the top bunk with my feet hanging off and and just being way too big for it. I'm not going to say what year it was, but you can pretend <laughs> I've been a tall person all my life. But yeah, it's like one of those it's one of those cherished memories for me because the same way with books that I've read on vacation that they just feel more special because yeah, attach Disney to it. So, you can think of it as, well, I'm here on vacation. I need to be going all the way out and and go into everything, but that's not the case at all. The, the most mundane tasks and and experiences can be more because you're at Walt Disney World and you're in your your special happy place with it. So that's uh yes. that's what's eating um, this Gilbert grape. That's for sure. I love that. <laughs> Fantastic. <Aww. laughs> Rhino, what's the next one? <laughs> um being underprepared for lines without fast pass. There are pros and cons to the lack of fast pass in the park, but one thing to keep in mind is that you will not have those three e-ticket attractions tucked up your sleeve. Preparing to wait in line is part of the Disney experience, but when you are used to skating through these multi-hour wait times using the Fast Pass Plus system, you might not be adequately prepared to wait in an outdoor queue for long periods of time. The usual recommendations are imperative and shouldn't need to be said, but some always need reminding just the same. Sorry, I lost myself in that sentence. Uh, Take a hat, always carry water with you, wear sunscreen, and bring a travel size version with you so you can reapply during the day. Zoe Wood, you could not say that enough. Bringing the sunscreen with you is imperative. You are going to need to reapply that before the suggested time on the bottle. Um, But yeah, I I mean, I think about Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I mean, that that queue is always right there in the center of the courtyard at Hollywood Studios. So always a good amount of people in it because, you know, it's a popular ride and it's a it's a fun ride. But you're just right out there in the sun. If you're waiting in the middle of the day, that's like you're in a frying pan. (laughs) Oh, and it's like they placed 30 umbrellas around, but it's these magical umbrellas where you are never <laughs> no standing shade. in the yeah. spot where the yeah. umbrellas actually do cast the shadow. It's like, it's wild. Yeah, right. it it's always, always out of the line. It's like the line goes right up to where the umbrella is, but the the shade is on the other side of the line at all times of day, if there is, is even any. Yeah. And can I just say... Don't even think for one split second that if it's cloudy out, you won't get sunburn because yeah. you will. And mm-hmm. it is almost worse. And I'm not even kidding. So just Ugh. make sure that you are reapplying that. I'm a big fan of um, they actually make um, sunscreen and like deodorant sticks is what it looks like. And yes. so those are those are really great to have, especially um, since, you you know, a big thing with sunscreen is like I put on my hands and wiping it everywhere in your body, especially nowadays. You're already feeling extra gross. Like so like the stick is easier because that you could just like, you, you know, I always get sunburn on my nose. So like rubbing that, just having that with me just to be able to reapply it to my nose or whatever every so often is great. Um because the one I have is like specifically it, it's I think it's full body, but I have one that is for your face as well. But that's great, too, for the neck, because you can just go right up and down yeah. the neck. And it's also doesn't come out. It It's not quite as uh, I, I don't know, like the the ones that are like that come out of the bottles that are like the white ones. They feel super like greasy and oily yeah. sometimes. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's another thing to remember that. You're going to sweat probably a little bit extra when you have sunscreen on because it's just like wearing lotion outside on a hot day. So it's, you know, be prepared for that. Do your research on your sunscreen. Yeah. yeah. I don't uh, keep out. Forget- Go ahead, Go Denny. Ahead. Don't forget your lip balm that's got some SPF in it, too. You mm-hmm, don't want to mm-hmm. You don't wanna have yeah. sunburned lips. That's yeah. not going to be fun. You better off mm-hmm. buying the SPF one 
than having to buy the therapeutic one later on to fix yes. how yeah. damaged your lips got. It's oh. cut it off ahead. Yeah. But um, I, one thing I learned about- go ahead. Yep. Yep. No, you go ahead. I interrupted you. No, no, go, go. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah. So one of the things that I kind of learned the hard way when my daughter was little, I used to put her hair in pigtails all the time, all the time. And mm. if you part mm. your children's or your mm. hair down the middle, you got to sunscreen that part mm. because otherwise you will have a red stripe on your scalp and it will hurt so bad that you will just, it, it's a pain that you don't feel very uh, like on a regular mm. basis. Like as a kid, our shoulders always got sunburned, right? So we know how miserable that is. But when your scalp gets sunburned, oh, not fun. Fresh, fresh haircuts. You got to be careful. If you got a fresh haircut right before you came here, the fade, you got to remember that your skin is is probably pretty exposed right there. That that has happened to me once or twice where I was like, oh, I just came from the the hairdresser and then like getting there and being like, wait, great, great. Oh, (laughs) ouch. Um, I'd recommend... Right now in these times of COVID and such, people are all trying to avoid each other as much as possible. So if I could recommend being a person, be the person who has the spray can of sunscreen and make sure you get uncomfortably close to the person that's right (laughs) next to you and then just start spraying it right in their general direction. Uh, This happened to me (laughs) the other day and I was like, what what is going on? Like you were, you were like six feet away from me before and now you're a foot away from me and spraying sunscreen at me. It smells good, but it's just a little much. So uh, try, try thinking about being that person. But uh, I do want to get have to reapply though, Craig. So that's not. nice. I did not. No, <laughs> yeah. not. Get your face not. in the right place. You could, you know. <laughs> exactly. I, I was good for the next 80 minutes, give or take. But uh, one thing I do want to say about the, the lines without fast pass right now is I just want to stress that it's not that bad. And I've, I will speak firsthand with it right now. I am not in the locals mind sense of, oh, it's really long. I just I'll come back and go on at a time when I don't have to wait. I sometimes do that when I'm doing videos because I only have a lot of time in the day. But the other day I was I was slacking on my work and I was like, it's really hot. I want to just go ride Splash Mountain. And it, I got in line when it said 85 minutes, which just like, that's making my head hurt. Think that I actually, I did that and it ended up, you know, it's everything's still kind of in the overposting realm right now. It ended up being 50 minutes, which that's still a long time. And there are going to be times when the lines are even longer than that. And I've waited in those ones too. And I know it gets exhausting after a long day, but uh, if you couldn't get the fast passes, because you weren't good at pulling the ones that were really good, you were waiting a lot longer before for a lot of these attractions. So it's, it's actually one of those things. It's nice to be on a level playing field with everyone else for, for, you know, for a change. It's, it feels like it's, um, feels like it's, it's fair being there when everyone's waiting the same time together, unless you really want to avoid the lines, then you can become a club 33 member and avoid them on your, your very fun VIP tours. And with your, your fast pass that gets you into everything right now. So, uh, avoid not being a club 33 member, I guess is the, the definition of this, (laughs) but (laughs) Get good. more money. <laughs> we need to start playing the lottery. Rhino, what's next? Expecting <laughs> too much from children. Uh, I'd I'd say this works both ways. Expecting too much from adults too. But uh, <laughs> early mornings, late nights, hot temperatures, and the added exhaustion of COVID measures add up to a big ask of children, both younger and older ones. I'm sure there will be some readers already planning out there. My kids can last all day comebacks, and you're probably quite right. It'll be different for everyone. However, having realistic expectations is so important considering the added challenges that are in effect at the moment. Taking breaks is one thing, but be sure to watch for the signs that a meltdown is on the horizon for them and you. Pressing on in the interest of ticking all the planned boxes won't leave you with the memories you were hoping for. If you're looking for a break but hoping not to leave the park just yet, try booking in some of those table service lunches. Some locations such as Coral Reef have a relaxed, darker decor that can be quite calming for kids that need a rest. 
and adults who are also yeah. overloaded. <laughs> yeah, we obviously Rhino and I can't and shouldn't speak on the kids aspect of this. So, but I do agree with him on the adults aspect because uh, that is Rhino experienced it when we went out to California with my wife. But uh, I fall into the the line of I expect too much from my traveling partners. Because I even do the same thing with Rhino, where I'll be like, okay, we're getting up to rope drop, and it's yeah. 6.30. After we went to sleep at 3 in the morning. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Oh, my gosh. That's it takes how I me do that it. long to do my hair. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how I do it, though. So 6.30 I love hits, that. and I'm up. I'm out the door 20 minutes later, so I could be there right at, right at 7 a.m., and I'll get a text from Rhino at, like, it usually about, like, 9.30, 10 o'clock. I'm like, okay. I'm getting ready to leave the hotel soon. Like, how descriptive is that? <laughs> it's, I, the day's no. over. It's, I don't know what's, what you're saying. Have you already left? Are you currently walking out? Are you going to be another 45 minutes? And I like I, a mystery. It's usually the case. Then it's like the line to get in right now is so long. And I'll be like, yeah, well, that's, what I you. that's always the text you get from me. Do you know when it wasn't very long? When I got into the park four hours ago and... And then it'll be 1 a.m. And I'm like, well, we're not going to go to bed yet. We've still got fun to have. Yeah. And He'll be like, let's let's get in an Uber and go to go eat at Umami Burger and see if, we're, if, if the brewing place is still open. And I'm like, how can we do three of these in 40 minutes before everything closes? And we have and we'll do it again. Yes, we will. <laughs> and then we'll come back and yeah. watch Two Broke Girls and we'll repeat it all <laughs> again <laughs> the next <laughs> day. <laughs> of, okay. We're getting up to go. Craig's the energizer. When I travel with Craig, I feel like I am constantly pushing off exhaustion. Like it is always like <laughs> it's that point where you're like, oh, I can feel it in my stomach right now where I am like, is this sickness? And you're like, no, it's my body being like, what in God's name is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. But and sometimes you guys come back from these trips and you are sick. So now we know why. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> definitely. A Craig's, lack of sleep. Craig's gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm Craig. gross. It's I am, I am fully the problem in all of this, but yes, don't expect too much from your children or your your traveling partners if they're just the same age. It's at some point, and you know, it's a two way street though. It, you also have to admit when you've had too much. Don't don't just be quiet yeah, because yeah. you're trying to make your family happy or you think it will make them happy. It's oh, get into an open, engaged dialogue where if you've had too much, just say. We need to take a break. We need I need to a break. Yeah. Slow down. I feel like I feel like what I see from being in lines, like when I'm spending an hour waiting on Splash Mountain, what I'm overhearing is kids saying, this is boring. Why can't we go to the pool? And then you hear the parents retort like, no, it's going to be fun. This is what you want to do. And it's like, are you like, yeah, they are going to have fun, mm, but, yeah. you know, it's their vacation too. maybe just let them swim in the pool. I don't know. I, I thought, think you yeah. should not be afraid to split up your party, too, if you have to. Like, I think you should all have that realistic conversation and just say, like, hey, in a non-offensive way, there just might be a few minutes where I got to go and I got to go recoup. Like, I, I've I've learned to kind of do that. Like, when we go on trips to California, I find a moment where I'm like, OK, I know I got to go back because I know what'll what'll do good for me if it's really hot. Like, I know changing my clothes might make me just like give me that amazing amount of energy and usually we've bought like some sort of there's some bottles of water in the room or maybe there's a, there's a beer or something like that or maybe i'm going to stop somewhere as i'm walking back and just take a second and take that minute and it's not 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 anything against anybody else sometimes i just need to be alone for a few minutes because it's a lot to be in a crowd you know and so it's just like just yep. you know don't don't if just be aware of who you travel with. And if you have that opportunity to be able to be like, hey, you know what? Stay here. I'll be back in a little bit. Let me I just need a few minutes to go do my own my own thing right now because I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. It's never soon enough. And then that though. person you're wasting so up. much time. Yeah. You're wasting so oh much my. time. Um, but <laughs> Denny and Jackie, you've had kids actually weigh in on this in a serious manner. We'll stop talking for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> no, Aww. you're fine. Jackie, you want to go first? I can't. Sure. So one of the things Rhino said, I have written down on my list because my family made the mistake quite a number of times before we figured this out. And so if this little piece of information can help anyone, that would warm my heart. 
because you have to be able to say, you know what, guys, I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of feeling like I just need to go back to the room and chill for a little bit. So you guys keep on doing what you're doing. I'm going to just head back to the room for a couple hours and I'll let you know when I'm ready to come back. Because so when we first started vacationing, it was, it was my husband and I and our two kids, my parents, my brother and his wife. So it was just, it was, there were eight of us and right. Is that right? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Eight. And my brother and and sister-in-law now have three kiddos. So we are a party of 11 now, if we were to, you know, whenever we plan our next vacation. So, but we would all fly in from Seattle And so I was the spreadsheet girl and we'd have all these things to do. And I would almost get offended. Like if people didn't want to do what I worked so hard to plan, don't waste your time getting offended. Like you you were the Bob Saget of your group in the full house. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And don't regular Danny Tanner. Seriously. Do not be the Bob Saget. It's, it's not, it, it's not worth the, cause it is hard. This is not Disney Walt Disney world is not, it, it can be a relaxing vacation. You know, now that our kids are grown up and you know, mm-hmm. it, it, we can have a relaxing vacation because they can go knock themselves out. <laughs> and my husband and I can go chill by the pool. We don't care. So, or in our room, even for that matter, you know, so, but that's, that's the biggest thing that I would try to impose on people is to just do what you need to do. You'll be much happier for it. And if your kid is having a meltdown, don't, don't try to, you know, make them keep going. Just Mm -hmm. go with whatever it is that they want to do. If they want to twirl in front of the castle for an hour, just do it. Just let them. Sit down and Just let them let twirl. Them twirl. Let them twirl. <laughs> dance. You'll be happy you did. Why don't right. you dance? <laughs> oh yes. Gosh. Absolutely. The- I hope you dance. That's it. That's the lyrics. That's oh my yeah. <laughs> I knew where you were typing. I knew where you were trying to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Um, with with traveling with kids, like the trip to Walt Disney World starts months in advance. And these these little ones know something exciting is coming up, unless you're doing one of those big grand surprise things and you're putting it on social media. But um, but a normal trip, like they know there's a lot of ramp up and there's packing their suitcase and and there's planning the clothes and and mom's in, you know, everything's in disarray in the house because you know, everything's being planned and packed just right. And then they get up and maybe, you know, if you got to fly in, maybe it's an early flight and there's the whole lugging suitcases to the airport and, and you get to be on the Mickey bus that takes you to Walt Disney world and you're finally there and you get to see your room. It is all just anticipation overload for kids. And, um, And also, you've got to think of all the things that are different while you're here at Walt Disney World. It could be a different bedtime and a different nap time. And they could be missing all of their normal things that, whether you realize it or not, are the fabric of their everyday lives. And so everything is so very normal. So everything is going to be a little off kilter. And they might be fine for a couple of days, but eventually that's going to catch up. And and you might be that parent looking your kid in the eye going, what are you doing? Like, what's going on here in the middle of the Magic Kingdom or Epcot? Um, but <laughs> But you have to you have to take it all with a very big grain of salt. Right. And just try to build in as many normal things as you can. Um, And definitely Zoe's right on the money not to expect too much of your kiddos. Kiddos get to to they don't get to choose a whole lot in their lives when they're little, like they're told, they're told what to wear and you know, what they're eating and where they're going and all that jazz. Let them make some choices while they're here at Walt Disney world. Let them say what their, you know, what their favorite ride, like in magic kingdom, 
you know, little Bobby Sue, what's the one thing that you've that you really want to ride the most. And then you, everybody goes and rides that ride so that at least the child feels heard and, um, and gets to enjoy that, that thing. But it is really easy as the parent to kind of get caught up in the, oh, we are here and we are doing all the things, you know, come, you know what, or high water and you just grab your kid and you go, but that, that yeah. will surely lead to a meltdown at some point. So her, her final thing in her article says not taking advantage of a Dreams Unlimited travel agent. Yep, I wholeheartedly suggest that you contact Dreams Unlimited Travel to help you with your travel plans. With everything changing at a moment's notice, they're available to help you keep track of everything and be ready to zig when Disney zags. While you are enjoying the countdown to fabulous fun days ahead, they are there to keep an eye on your plans, adjusting as needed and contacting you with anything you need to know. These guys are experts. And most importantly, they have a passion for Disney so strong. They'll look after your vacation as if it were your own. I'm truly happy for those of you. Oh, nope. That's the, that's the wrap up of her article. Sorry. That's where I should have stopped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I've never heard of this company, so I can't really speak on their behalf, but nor have I ever used them. So anyone who wants to throw in an opinion about this, feel free to do so. No, I've, I mean, she I've makes a, them. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go right now. I, no, I haven't used them. So if you've used them, please go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I only work for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've definitely used them. And it's so nice to be able to um, send a, you know, an email and say, oh, I'd like to try for this reservation, um, dining reservation, or I'd like to try for that. And, and you know that that your, your dreams unlimited travel agent is going to get right on that. And you'll get an email back saying, you know, it's a go or it's not, but here are other suggestions and they'll send, which is fantastic suggestions for your day, things not to, to be missed out on. But here's the thing. And I've said this before on the podcast. I also like planning my vacations a lot. I find some joy in just that process and your dreams and limited travel agent will kind of take cues from you about, you know, how much you want to plan on your own. You, you kind of get to make that call. Um, but I saw something and I know it was Disney cruise line, but I saw something, um, uh, from someone on, on Disboards on Facebook, or maybe it was the DCL, uh, fan Facebook group, but someone who said, you know, how do I avoid having to be on, you know, hold with Disney for forever? It's like three, four, five hours. And someone else chimed in and said, use Dreams Unlimited Travel. Like that, that travel agent will literally do that for you. So if you're coming to Disney World and new things have been introduced, you don't have to be that person who's physically sitting on the phone. Your travel agent is, and they'll look for discounts even after you've booked. So if there's something that's applicable to your booking, they'll go ahead and do that. So you might end up saving money in the end because Disney will not call you when a discount is released that <laughs> might apply to your vacation. <laughs> They're not going to be that's calling right. you and saying, Miss Smith, don't know, but we're going to send you $600. Didn't know if you knew this. No, that's not happening. Um, but, your, but your travel agent can do that. So there, it's just... It's such a benefit and it's at no, I know we say this till we're blue in the face, but it really is at no extra cost to you. I, I, I had to actually call Disney the other day and I was on hold for 90 minutes before I just hung up. I was so annoyed. Oh. I was just like, I don't want to be doing oh. this. So then I called universal to take care of something and I was on hold for 90 minutes and I hung up and <laughs> I gave up oh and it was just, I ended up oh. having to go like in person to take care of the stuff, what I was trying to call about. But I was just like, man, I just did not want to be sitting in one place now for three hours trying to get somebody on the phone, ultimately not to get anyone on the phone. But I, I also think the pandemic is a great example of like, I, I'll admit it. I always thought like in, you know, when I started working, like I was like, why a travel agents, I always felt like, or using a travel agent was for like a specific type of person. But Man, after this pandemic went down, I was like, forget it. If it doesn't cost you anything mm -hmm. extra, I don't know why you wouldn't do it. Because it seems like for a long time now, we're going to be dealing with stuff that is just constantly changing. Like I 
we go to the parks, uh, you know, I, I'm in the park like four days a week. I don't even remember what's open or not. I, I, I get nervous. Like I was like, oh, I'm, I want to go film this video at this resort. And then I'm like, I don't even know if that resort is open. I don't know. I think yeah. it is. And I, but I'm like, so it's one of those things where I'm like, I oh, just, having somebody that knows all that information that can just just easily shoot you an email or however you you choose you you set up your communication preference with your person whatever you don't even have to get on the phone with them ever so it's like i don't it's it's one of those things where i'm like god it just moves a, it will remove this whole layer of like anxiety or stress so it's like it's i'm yes. one of those people where i've just like if it's free why not just do it you know what i mean free in yeah. terms of it being not an extra paid service because it's just like you know worst case scenario you book with them and then you don't have to have even you can just be like, ah, well, I didn't even need to talk to them. Who knew what it won't change anything for you, except for what Jenny just said. A discount pops up. Lord knows I'm not looking at that stuff all the time. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. I was so misinformed about what travel agencies actually did before I started yeah. working for the company Same. because I, I just had no idea. You know, and a lot of people don't know, they just don't realize and there's nothing wrong with that. So it's, it's just something that you, if you didn't experience working with a travel agent before you, you just don't know. And so when we tell you that it's seamless and it's as much assistance or as little assistance as you want, it's, it's the best. It's like having a little friend in your back pocket who knows all the Disney details. No. I think we did uh, a good job at selling the company as, as good as we could. Uh, you know, if Peter John was watching this right now, I hope they'd be like, OK, they can stay another day. They did good. But <laughs> yeah, I, I it's it's just it's just going to help you, honestly. And you can have the pride of, uh, you know, helping a small business and. You know, maybe maybe helping that person who knows even less about Disney than than you, that you can make sure that they have a great first time and just continue the chain of happiness from family to family who convinces more people to travel to Walt Disney World. The happy stories like that. So, yeah. Um, yes. Any final thoughts? Mm -mm. Okay. I think Zoe put a great list together and I and I can't yep. wait to hear what other suggestions are too that, on, on other mistakes. Yeah, that's a that's a great yeah. suggestion. So uh, if you want to tell us what mistakes you try to avoid when planning your Walt Disney World vacation, of course, you can always let us know in the comments section if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're listening, you can always reach out to us on all of our social media channels. Uh, they, you know, we are easily found around the internet so you can tell us what you think about things and yeah you can you can always even email us too i guess if you you really you really want to go the hardest route of all just go ahead and email us and and let us know <laughs> what you think but uh beyond that too please uh leave any other video ideas suggestions random comments about how you feel in general in our comment section on youtube and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you are uh hitting that thumbs up on this video because because that's really important to us. And if you are listening to this, please make sure you are subscribed wherever you're listening. And on top of that, too, and make sure that you are uh, leaving us ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts, because that will also ensure that more people find out about us and help we can help them plan the perfect vacation like you can, too, if you use Dreams Unlimited Travel. But I'm not going to beat this one into the ground because... We already did a good enough sale on it. So with that, uh, Conductor Craig is putting this thing back on the rails. Uh, Choo Choo Master. Yep, he called it. And uh, we will see you again real soon with another episode of Off the Rails the next time we go Off the Rails. Thank you, everyone, so much. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>